Today we're going to have a look at the Isle of Man and its independence. Could the Isle of Man become energy self-sufficient? That's the question. And this is based on the fact that, um, well, there was a well drilled by BP back in 1982 and it discovered 44 metres of gas. Now, there are a range of sizes quoted for this, anywhere between uh, 90 BCF, uh, proven in the fault block that the well encountered, up to as much as uh, 1 trillion cubic feet. Now, the well didn't flow on test, so uh, there still are some uncertainties. But there's a company that uh, wants to go out there and drill an appraisal well, but they need to raise £32 million. The prospect, which is called Kroger, is 17 kilometres from the coast, and it's in a water depth of 15 metres. The CEO of Kroger came out and said, uh, yeah, they're looking to raise money, but it would not be a secure investment. This approach differs somewhat to claims of other prospects uh, we've covered recently where some of the claims are outrageously large. But um, this one, yeah, the guy's saying, well, maybe it's not a secure investment, but let's have a look at it anyway. Potentially, in the success case, it could yield 20 years of revenue, about £12 billion, of which 50% of that would go to the Isle of Man government, the Manx government, in taxes. If you look at that number, it's 923 times the investment. And then they asked the question whether it would help achieve net zero by 2050. So here is the Isle of Man and the, the Kroger prospect just east of the island. The Kroger appraisal well apparently is going to be known as independence. Now, this is energy independence, not the new Manx People's Republic. When the well was drilled back in 1982... It was actually in UK waters, but since then um, it's been redetermined as being uh, in Manx territorial waters. Here's a more detailed location map. This is the major sort of gas province, but as well as gas, you can see these are all the wind farms that exist here in the, uh, the north of the Irish Sea. Here is this block 112.25, and this is the Kroger Prospect here. Two other features I'd like to point out. Here's the Interconnector 2, as it's known, going from Scotland across to Ireland. And there is a link here, which actually currently brings uh, gas into the Alaman, and we'll look at that in a bit more detail. The other thing is this electric interconnector here, basically bringing electricity to Douglas, the capital of the island. So that's currently how the Isle of Man gets most of its energy. This video is in response to a piece that uh, the BBC put out there, and it was talking about a contractor being appointed for a well in late 2023 and giving a little bit of background as to what the prospect is all about. Now, why Kroger? Why have we chosen this one? Well, we followed Frontier Acreage and we've looked at uh, prospects prior to drilling before, but we've never really looked at a single asset company at the pre-funding stage, so they haven't got the funds in place yet. Kroger is a discovery, but it needs appraisal results. It needs to be determined whether it could be a commercial concern. Another reason I'm doing it, well, as a kid, I went to the Isle of Man often and, uh, and I grew to love the place. Now, we're saying here, we're not investing in this. We've got no ties to any of the stakeholders here. Nobody's paying us for this video. So we're not advising on any kind of investment in this or any other. Um, stock or share. If you like this and our other technical assessments, however, you can commission independent reports from us. So let's have a look uh, at the stratigraphy here. So the uh, the main reservoirs, uh, the most successful, have been in this uh, Triassic, the Ormskirk sandstone formation. And when we look at the various uh, porosity permeability data that we've compiled and put together in the Trove database, you can see there's the one Miller Darcy cutoff here. Uh, you can see we have lots of good quality rock going up to a Darcy plus in this region here. Uh, on the underlying graph here we actually show the the Permian Collyhurst sandstone. Now a lot of the samples at the sort of the 0.1 to the 0 0.01 uh, and part of the reason for that is that these sands at Kroger were buried as far as uh, 4,000 meters below sea level 
and have since been inverted. Taking a quick look at the structure at Kroger, here is the well in this uh, this small fault panel here. The independence well is supposedly targeting this panel in here. You can see this is how it was mapped at one time, and here's a, a, a different vintage of map. It's a sort of a faulted anticline. This is a, a major fault here, and this region is, is downthrown. Within this panel here, they talk about uh, up to sort of mid case of about 90 BCF having been proven. Uh, but you can see that potentially this is a much larger prospect. So the proposal is a conservative step out just to see if we can grow the, uh, the size of this and find indeed the better reservoir quality. There was no uh, flow on test and that is one of the risks. It will be the first well drilled under the Isle of Man jurisdiction. Pause the video and, uh, and read this if you wish. Here's a look at a map, and this shows the uh, Manx territorial waters up to the 12 nautical mile limit. Some of the basins in the region are highlighted. And here's the Kroger well. It's only one of three wells that was drilled. No well has been drilled within Manx territorial waters for over 25 years. Now, the tectonic setting here, this is the Langman Fault here and the Keys Fault down here. I, I would say looking at this size, it's actually it's pretty good quality, even back in 1997. So you can actually see and you can see the interpretation that's been made here. I'm sure it's been improved and there is better data available. By drilling away from that fault in, in this panel here, it may well be that better reservoir quality may be determined. Now, here's the well results, and this is the, the, the Collyhurst sandstone interval, the, the Permian sandstone. And we can see here, this is the gas coming down to, to round about here. In total, there was a 220 metres of Collyhurst. Net is kind of variably quoted as somewhere between 44, 48 metres. Average porosity, 10%, a range of, of 8 to 12% is quoted. The average hydrocarbon saturation is of the order of about 60%, uh, sort of eyeballing that from this curve here. And the average permeability, well, in one report, the average permeability is quoted as being, or calculated as being 0.2 millidarsies. Based on test results, the fact that there was some gas cut mud in the test string, the company quotes somewhere between 0.3 and 0.6 millidarcies. So quite low permeability, quite low uh, porosity, but there have been a number of examples of this sort of rock being fractured and flowing in the Southern North Sea. There are some better poroperm sands uh, in the aquifer within this well, and uh, some of the offset wells also seem to have better porosity and permeability. So it might be that this proximity of the fault may be degrading the, the porosity and permeability. We can only find out by drilling a well. And here's another interpretation here, again from BP, and looking at the uh, the facies, the, these, these sands at the top here are thought to be um, aeolian sands with uh, more fluvial sands underneath. This is the interval that the drill stem test was conducted over. This is the assessment back in the day by BP they're saying no problems with source no problems with trap but uh, with with reservoir yes it's, it's present it is effective but the deliverability that's really in question in the southern north sea there are a number of examples of fields that uh, have got a very low uh, average permeability and you can see all those listed in our trove southern north sea database this is a cross section here from northwest to, to southeast. And you can see here's the Kroger Discovery Well. And this is where we, we believe that independence is going to be drilled somewhere in this in this fault block. So we've kind of suggested it's going to be relatively high up, but some distance away from the fault, just in case there is some anomalous mineralization and poroperm reduction associated with that fault. And it would you know, should probably go down and certainly test beyond the limits of closure of this structure. This is what it could look like. The idea would be it would be some kind of subsea development in time if the appraisal well was successful, a few wells being tied back here by a subsea pipeline to an onshore processing facility. And from there, it would tie in to the to the Isle of Man gas distribution, which, which does exist. You can see this is the linkage to the interconnector, which kind of came into operation back in 2005. It's still operational. If successful, uh, Kroger would have more gas than Isle of Man would require. So um, 
95% of it potentially could be uh, exported via the uh, interconnector too. Now, I've no idea whether it has that sort of uh, knowledge and capacity to take those sorts of volumes, but it would certainly help uh, supplying gas to both Ireland and the UK. Key takeaways from this? Well, Kroger, it is a big structure. Reservoir deliverability, we see as being the, the main risk. Potentially, we may be a bit higher uh, in the uh, Triassic and haven't really understood the full potential of the Carboniferous, but they could have better poroperm characteristics, potentially. Currently, Isle of Man, as we've said, it imports gas via the interconnected too. But obviously, having your own uh, in-country reserves, uh, they probably have a, a lower carbon footprint than actually importing gas from a long, long way away. And would it help with the transition to a net zero by 2050? Well, yet essentially, the field could be developed and depleted by 2050, so it wouldn't impact on that date. And of course, gas is essential for transition. We still have to maintain and keep the houses warm, keep industry running, and gas could do that for another few decades uh, until uh, we've transitioned to, to power. And of course, it would be the gas and the money that would be derived from taxation of the gas that could actually fund the transition systems. In the success case, again, I've got to have that caveat, Alaman could become a gas exporter, transforming the country's economy. So success would fund transition, but failure, it would cost £32 million. We see this as being high risk, but potentially a high reward opportunity. So, don't know if you knew this, but the Isle of Man, the uh, inhabitants of the island, they're all British citizens, but it's uh, not in the UK, uh, nor is it a, a member of the European Union. So, it's got quite unique politics. Please uh, subscribe, hit the like button and the bell. Look forward to seeing you back on our channel before too long.